We're having drug purge. Hello everybody, welcome back to another brand new episode of Business Space. You might be thinking, oh Simon, is this one sponsored? You're holding your tablet. You're not holding a script. And I'm like, no, I forgot to print this one out. So we're doing off the tablet. So there's going to be a little less slapping today, although maybe we'll just... Just a little. Uh, this is actually one of my trending videos where we have a different team. The crack team. Is it crack? Is that what you smoke? Who I said was basically the team from Casual Criminalist. Everyone was in the comments being like, Simon, is your like crack news team just the same guys who write Casual Criminalist and, and make uh, and edit Casual Criminalist? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Welcome. I was reading the news yesterday and I heard that Washington legalized magic mushrooms. I mean, I'm for all for legalization, like 420 plays all the way, guys. Magic mushrooms seems pretty intense. I've never done magic mushrooms. I have a friend of mine has done hallucinogenic drugs. So who do you hang out with? And uh, he found them very intense. <laughs> it was me! Yeah, he. So that seems like quite an intense one. Is this Washington DC or Washington? By the way, guys, I know that the guy, what did George Washington, did he, did he found America? I'm not sure what George Washington did. He crossed a river called the Delaware, maybe? There's a famous painting. George Washington did something. I know he's important. He's on the $1 bill or either the 100 don't know. Those are Benjamins. So that's Benjamin Franklin. Was he a pres- Look, I'm gonna stop displaying my ignorance, but I know George Washington was important, but did we have to name two places after him? And did they have to be as far away as possible? It's like there's a three hour time difference there. It's like, oh yeah, I've got a call with Washington. And it's like DC or state. Because if it's state, that's a lot more of a hassle because that's a nine hour time difference. Anyway, you'll see that uh, while this is, you know, it's supposed to be a shorter trending video, it's, uh, it's got very long. What happens here is Callum will write me a script. I will read the script and Jen will sprinkle in some fine vintage memes or not. No, 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 no. We don't do that here. I don't know what Jen sprinkles in. We're still finding our way. Uh, so basically what we're doing today, surprising stories of drug decriminalization and why they happened. It's hard to imagine since most of us grew up with the just say no ass to you drilled into us. If you don't use drugs, you can just about be anything you want to be. Throughout school, but in the not so distant past, the world was awash in legal drug use. In the 1920s, cocaine was just another tasty ingredient in your soda. Yeah, it was. And to the Victorians, a few hits of opium was just a nice way to unwind after a hard day of whipping off and seeing coal mines. <laughs> I mean, legit. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cal Callum's making a joke about the past. But it's like, yeah, it was really sh**. It's really sh**. The past was the worst. You could actually buy a t-shirt to that effect to purchase the merch.co. Woo! Now it seems as if things are taking a turn back towards a general acceptance of recreational drugs, but with the added caveat of social responsibility. Scientists and lawmakers are determined to get it right this time by focusing on the potential benefits of drugs and legalization, which may have been under our noses all along. Oh, they, they, in the past, when they were like, yeah, yeah, cocaine's legal, opium's legal, it was always like, yeah, 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 cocaine for, uh, if you're feeling lethargic, it's great. They always came up with medical reasons. It wasn't just like, yeah, we love coke. Get a line in, son. It was just, uh, it was always under the guise of some medical bullshit. The drug conversation is a messy, impassioned debate. Little wonder that it's birthed some entertaining news stories in recent years. Today we'll be looking at three tales of decriminalization to see how various places are going about it. Doing it the right way, doing it the wrong way, and doing it the Irish way. I have no idea how the Irish did it. I'm gonna guess, like, Portugal isn't everything basically legal in Portugal? I heard it was like a drug haven. Like, if you want heroin, you can get heroin. But I don't, I don't, you probably can't buy heroin from a store, right? Well, look, I'm not an expert. Let's jump in. Shrooms are now legal in Washington, D.C. For British stoners, you have to take a ferry to Amsterdam to enjoy some guilt-free THC. Look, no one's feeling guilty about smoking weed, Callum. People I might know might be feeling guilty about being criminals, but they're not feeling guilty about the taking the... Look, okay, let's move on. American weed legalization seems like an impossible dream, but already 14 states have legalized recreational cannabis and it looks like the rising tide is lifting a few boats as we speak. On March the 15th, Washington DC woke up to a new world. It was on that day that DC Initiative 81 took effect, which effectively decriminalized magic mushrooms and a host of lesser known psychedelics. This has been on the card since last November. That is remarkably soon. Someone just suggested last November that you should legalize mushrooms and it's, January, February. It's March and you guys are like, yeah, 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 cool. Okay. <laughs> this has been on the cast since last November and somehow managed to run the gauntlet of a 30-day congressional review without being shot down. Speaking of coke. Oh! Ah! One-handed. 
I mean, a similar attempt to legalize cannabis in the district was shot down in 2014 by Republican Representative Andy Harris. <laughs> allegedly. Uh, despite a public vote showing 70% support. <laughs> I bet Andy was real popular after that. <laughs> However, his threats to do the same this time never materialized. At least now Harris and his fellow conservative lawmakers in the Capitol can finally chill out and find out what all the fuss is about for themselves. Expect some wild scenes at Congress in the coming months. Are you imagine in Congress, they're like, guys, we're considering the legalization of magic, magic mushrooms. Well, I think one thing is clear. If we're gonna do this, we have to try it. That'd be epic. Now, I should add here that there is a key difference between decriminalization and legalization. The former means reducing or repealing legal sanctions against users, while the latter means making it A-OK -okay to use and sell the substance. Keep this in mind so you don't use this video as a legal defense when you're off your face and try to scale the Lincoln Memorial. I, I'm so half right now. I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, so it's decriminalized. It's not really le This is the problem. Like... You know, I said I read that article. I absolutely just read the headline and was like, fascinating. I'd like to learn more, but I'd like to get paid for it by making a video. So you can see, like, it's just decriminalized. And I live in Prague in the Czech Republic. All the shit is decriminalized here. Like, you can carry whatever you want. You can have, like, a few grams. I don't know how much it is, but you can be carrying crack or meth or all of the really serious drugs that will f up your life. I mean, all drugs will f No, they won't. <laughs> no, they won't. This isn't the 80s. Or 60s. Or whenever, don't say don't drugs something was a thing it's you're fine but you can carry pretty much everything as long as you're not going to sell it no one cares it's all decriminalized which is great because all that's happened in dc is that they've taken away some of the punishments previously associated with shrooms mescaline and ayahuasca i know ayahuasca is really intense didn't that guy uh was it michael from vsauce who did ayahuasca in a video <laughs> so, dude um, these drugs are now at the bottom of the police priority list, making it highly unlikely that small-time recreational users and growers will be punished for the little psychobotanical hobby from now on. It is an open season on shrooms just yet, but it is a step in this direction. I can't believe that, there's a that there would actually be shops like... It used to be legal in Amsterdam. You could buy magic mushrooms in a shop. They made it illegal because I think people died. Um, surely they're not going to have, like, head shops selling magic mushrooms. That's going to be wild. <laughs> You might be wondering why I bother decriminalizing psychedelic plants in the first place. Well, the initiative was spearheaded by Melissa Lavasani and her Plant Medicine Coalition. She claims to have first-hand experience of the legitimate therapeutical benefits of these plants. Yes, yeah, she does! Which helped her out of a severe bout of postnatal depression. She's quoted as saying, I developed anxiety. I had panic attacks once a week. I was hearing voices. I was desperate for a solution. I would try anything because it was life or death for me. Now, I'm not recommending you go out picking fungi in the woods the next time you're feeling down. Don't do that. Like... Don't do that unless you really know what you're doing because you're going to get poisoned. <laughs> I've seen that movie Into the Wild where he eats the wrong thing and he dies in a bus in the middle of nowhere. It's like, dude, that is not how you want to go. And that was based on a real story. Don't go picking weird things in the woods and eating them. But if these strange little plants have the potential to fix some pretty severe psychological problems, then it's probably best we lay off the moralizing and let the scientists take a proper look. Of course the scientists should be taking a look. Just like, I don't know, have a go. Why not? It's gonna be a good job, right? I, when I was a kid, like a kid, when I was like a young adult, I would... <laughs> Am I still a young adult or am I middle-aged? I'm 33, when does that happen? I used to test uh, experimental drugs for money. None of them were ever this interesting. The most interesting one I got to take was like a, a sedative of some kind. And I was in hospital for like two weeks taking this experimental sedative. And I was just like, it was, we, it, I was there with like 18 other people. We were super chilled out the whole time. It was great. It's like, what did you say? I watched 17 seasons of The Simpsons. Yep. An Irish legal lapse initiated a 48-hour free-for-all. Oh no, that is amazing. From a potential medical miracle to a legal blunder for the ages. One week in March 2015, the city of Dublin braced itself for a sesh of epic proportions. And it does say sesh, not session, but sesh. Sesh. S-E-S-H. Sesh. Just as, is that, I feel like that's very British, but maybe it's American. It'd be like, yeah, come around to my house, we're gonna have a sesh. Which can mean like, you know, drugs or drinking. Come around my house, we're gonna have a drinking sesh and then go out. <laughs> oh my God, I'm reminded of university so much right now. So many drinking seshs. I mean, what? I found out my parents watch Business Place. Very light drinking. <laughs> no recreational drug use, of course. <laughs> uh, just as it did every single week prior. <laughs> However, the clubs and pubs had reason to be especially prepared this time. That's because on Tuesday, the 10th of March, a loophole in the law threw open the floodgates by making a handful of Class A drugs legal for a 48-hour period. Oh my god, it's like the purge, but for drugs. For the next 48 hours, all drugs shall be legal. <laughs> That'd be epic. 
Basically, the Irish Court of Appeal ruled that a certain passage of the country's 1977 Misuse of Drugs Act was unconstitutional, effectively scrubbing it from the law. It just happened that the passage contains clauses which outlawed the possession of MDMA, ketamine, magic mushrooms, and even crystal meth. That's incredible. Just people like smoking crystal meth on the streets. The government quickly realized that they didn't have any backup in place and drafted up some emergency legislation to plug the gap, but they couldn't get this fully passed until 12 a.m. on Tuesday. This meant that in the interim, Ireland was being transported back to 1991 to relive the acid rave glory days one more time. Wait, in 1991? Was all this legal? I don't think so. After the blunder was noticed, the Department of Health somewhat con counterintuitively issued a statement advertising the impending ketamine fest, saying, All substances controlled by means of government orders made under Section 2, Subsection 2 of the uh, cease to be controlled with immediate effect, and the possession ceases to be an offense. In other words, <laughs> let the purge commence! I can't believe they actually did this. It is like the purge. Why would you announce this? Just shut the f up and no one will notice. Reporting from the front line for Vice magazine on that fateful Wednesday. Who else would be reporting on this other than Vice? Uh, Royce in Kybird wrote of people falling over each other, beady-eyed, hugging the walls and each other, and guys in pairs chewing invisible bubblegum, clenching their fists a lot and shouting at each other. This is the most Vice thing I've ever read in my life. In other words, it was pretty much indistinguishable from a regular weekday in Dublin, just with a few less people going to jail. Before the revelers had gotten over their come downs, the new Irish legislation kicked in and life went back to normal. Those magical 48 hours passed into after party mythology, never to be repeated. Can you imagine if they found out, like with the purge, that it actually reduced the crimes from drugs, like related crimes, not the crimes of having the drugs themselves, for the rest of the year? And the Irish government would guess what? We're having drug purge! <laughs> I'd like to see that. When I finally have a country, we'll do that. It'll be great. A Texan THC technicality kind of decriminalized weed. I feel like this is going to be a bit of a letdown from the last one, Callum, because that, I don't know what can top the absolute drug free for all in Ireland for 48 hours. While the news that the Irish like a bit of class A's every now and again isn't exactly shocking, I believe Americans call those Schedule Ones. It's like, you know, the big boy drugs heroin, cocaine. Fentanyl. There are some shocking corners of the world where the decriminalization of drugs is highly unexpected. Texas is surely one of them. The state is among the reddest in the entire USA, a famous fortress of conservative ideals. Although now I read that everyone is everyone from California, who's like super liberal and all that, is moving to Texas. I don't know why. Is it is it taxes or is it that they don't like the government? What? <laughs> Maybe it's the same thing. They're all moving to Texas, and then Texas is becoming like really blue now i don't know i saw a bumper sticker on like a reddit post saying like don't california my texas or something who cares let's move on which made it all the more surprising when a story broke in 2019 suggesting that the lone star state had legalized weed just like those dirty devil worshippers in california but all was not as it seems the legal gray area which texan stoners found themselves in was due to efforts to legalize hemp if you're unfamiliar with hemp because you weren't raised by hippies it's basically a variety of the cannabis plant which is used for making fabrics rather than eroding the fabric of good traditional values. The distinction between weed and hemp is a matter of THC, the psychoactive chemical in marijuana. Over 0.3% THC makes it the devil's lettuce, and anything less, it's just plain old harmless hemp. For illustration's sake, apparently the average percentage for recreational cannabis in Colorado is upwards of 15%. Texan lawmakers didn't get around to writing this little distinction into their legal code until 2019, prior to which they just went with the all-cannabis bad approach. When they did end up legalizing hemp, this meant the change in the definition of marijuana, which the police and prosecutors just weren't prepared to deal with. The testing of hemp available across the state wasn't sensitive enough to detect the fine details in these percentages of a batch of seized cannabis. They'd be like, well, I guess there's only one way, one way we could see where this is going to get people high. Break out the rolling papers. What's a super Texas name? I have no idea, like, Bruce? That doesn't feel right. Chad? That doesn't also feel right. What's a good cowboy name? I don't know, let's move on. Each county decided for itself how to handle the situation, with some of the biggest, such as Harris County, deciding to suspend persecution, uh, prosecution for minor weed offenses, throwing dozens of low-stakes cases out of court until proper testing technology could be provided. The moral of the story is that if you're planning on smoking weed in Texas, just make sure that your dealer is so bad that the machines don't even register his goods as actual drugs. But also, the whole episode only highlights the fact that Texas isn't as averse to cannabis as you might expect. Just the year before, the Texas Tribune newspaper 
run a poll which displayed majority support for legalization in the state. As Heather Fazio from Texans for Responsible Marijuana Policy put it, prosecuting people for low-level marijuana isn't a good use of resources, nor is it worth the devastating human consequences that come with a drug conviction. I just feel like this is like one of those things of like, yeah, obviously, but we still have to point this out that sending people to prison for weed which will ruin their life and job prospects and all of that is just a terrible idea just stop it stop it even so even though many of the politicians are still high on their tough on drugs rhetoric the people themselves aren't so interested in running teenagers li in ruining teenagers lives over just a little bit of weed wrap up Ooh, we don't get these with Danny. Get excited. That wraps up our rapid fire overview of decriminalization victories and blunders of the last five years. It's clear that all you stoners in the West are living in a golden age, even though we're all well aware how drugs can absolutely devastate lives and communities. Yeah, but not weed. How many people have you met whose life, life was devastated by weed? If anything, people I've met who do a lot of weed, it's like, oh, well, you're just less successful, less motivated, but your life definitely hasn't been ruined by weed. You clearly love it. Like, I wish I loved weed like you did because my life is busy and stressful, whereas you just like playing Xbox all day. That sounds awesome! In another life, I would absolutely get super into weed and just be so demotivated and just get really good at... I don't know, what's one of those games I've never played that everyone gets super into, like StarCraft? The culture is starting to wake up to the fact that we may have thrown the baby out with the bathwater. To review, psychedelics might offer some life-saving treatments for mental illness. Decriminalizing weed can save police time and preserve the future of harmless recreational users and ketamine. Well, ketamine's still ketamine. Probably best to stay away from ketamine. Never done ketamine. I know it's called Special K. Uh, isn't it a horse tranquilizer that makes people... It, it's... Is it a hallucinogen? I don't even know. Look, I've got no interest in ketamine. We'll see soon enough whether this modern approach works. If and when President Biden follows through on his promise to decriminalize weed nationwide. Wow! Is he gonna do that? That's epic! Meanwhile, the Brits will just have to make do with a tub of industrial glue and an empty crisp packet, as we've always done. Wait, <laughs> we're just sniffing glue in the UK? <laughs> Oh, that's depressing. This has been an episode of Business Blaze. I have been your boy with the blaze. Oh, I'm actually wearing a Beard Blaze t-shirt today. This isn't actually for sale. This isn't a piece of merch. This is, uh, an, uh, I'm a walking advertisement for my Beard Oil brand, which I don't actually have in front of me. But I make Beard Oils, which you put in your beard and it makes it so soft and smooth and healthy. Beardblaze.com if you want to get your hands on some of that. And thank you for watching.